Hello guys, how are you doing? Today's story is from Kuwait. Of course, everybody know it, very famous country. The incident happened in 1995 when there was no phones. Um, the technology wasn't adv that advanced. There was no surveillance cameras. So detectives uh, depended on whatever clues they have and and uh, and uh, I don't know what to call that method in English but uh, questioning the suspects looking for a legit suspect and questioning them in a smart way that being said and before we start the story since I told you this channel is about introducing you to uh, strange cultures places you never been nations you never met probably some of you in the Gulf area, in the Arabic Gulf area, where Saudi Arabia is and Kuwait and Dubai, I'm sure by now everybody knows that area, family class and family reputation has a very heavy weight socially. Like your value as a family, as a person, and your power in the society comes from your family class and your family reputation and its position in the society. Some of it is an inheritant. It comes with you when you're born. The family name is just probably descendant from the prophet. So you are uh, you have a, like a, a holy blood or something like that. I know you're not familiar with this, but that's how it is. Some of it related to money. Some of it related to activities in the society. Then the family become famous that they are contributing to the society. Um, and that's it and uh, some of them by uh, they gain their power and position by contributing as I said to the society where they spend money and and uh, are being productive members of the society they help the youth they help elderly they spend their money and stuff like this so if any person or member in that family committed a mistake socially or morally or religiously it affects the family reputation and family name specifically girls I know it's unfair like the guy can go and sleep around or does whatever mistake for some reason the guy doesn't have that much heavy weight when it comes to harm to himself but definitely his family name will get affected so it's the duty of the people to maintain that family reputation and position in the society and it's a massive uh, mistake and uh, it will drag everybody to the to hell if one made a, a social or moral mistake when it comes to girls they have to be virgins almost a hundred percent of girls are, are virgins dating doesn't exist in that society um, if you want to meet a girl or be with a girl physically you have to marry her you can't just be and it's an insult to ask a girl to be physically intimate with you of course there are bad girls or loose girls at that society called them in their standards who would be easy going with any guy or give their bodies away before marriage or some of them by mistake they get promised with marriage and the guy trick them and he never proposed after that and she's in trouble if that happens and the girl became loose and she does things behind her family permission or sneak out of the house or after work or during work the family commit a very uh, bad deeds like kill their daughter and that action it's forbidden in the faith it's forbidden socially the law is against it, but there are still some people, really rarely now, before it was a really big deal. Uh, not big deal, I mean, now it's a big deal. Back then, it, there was no law enforcing anything before governments come in, before society become monitored. A lot of girls were being killed under the umbrella of washing their family uh, shame. They call it shame killing. So if the girl got killed, the family can re maintain its reputation and 
it's it's position in the society that 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 shameful deed is done and is buried that being said now we can go back to our story and i can start it so you understood that social principle the incident happened outside kuwait kuwait as you know the whole middle east that area is full of that is, is a flat a flat plain desert uh, so one day a girl a ghost showed up from the side of the of the desert area where cars were driving across the desert a ghost showed up out of nowhere uh, full of covered with the blood dark face hair is everywhere like her hair was of she that ghost was touching a, a power outlet you know <laughs> With the cartoons, when you touch our power, the power outlet, your hair stands up in the air. Something like that. Uh, it looked like a ghost that came out of nowhere. Cars stopped. People freaked out and panicked. She was dragging herself on the dirt. And people, when they approached her, it wasn't a ghost. It was just a girl who was almost dying, bleeding everywhere. She has a massive gush in her head. And uh, a stabbing wound in her stomach. She collapsed at the at the at the spot. Even the ambulance couldn't make it to her. Somebody grabbed her and put her in his car and took her to the emergency room. Uh, they were able to save her life there, barely alive. They didn't know if she's gonna survive it or not. She was in a coma. Uh, from her IDs, I think I'm not sure. The report didn't mention how they found out her family. I think she woke up after two or three days, was able to talk. She said, called my dad. Uh, the family was communicated with and called the dad. When they called him, he obviously was a freaked out that they found the girl alive. They told him, come to the hospital. Uh, the police investigated him. They couldn't get anything. He was sincerely shocked of, of what happened to his daughter, and he was happy that she was okay and wasn't missing or dead. Uh, the, the hospital then contacted the police station. The police station, of course, considered it attempt murder, and they designated investigators to the, to the case. The police officers, when they are not police officers, the investigators now came to the hospital, asked to meet the, the dad, investigated him, but they couldn't get anything out of him. He was sincerely shocked, has no information. He said, my daughter just went to work, and we never heard from him, her after that. So the investigators thought they should start with her work. Um... Uh, they went to where she works. She's she's a, a teacher at a middle school. I think the report didn't mention that, but she was in bit, between 21 and 25 because she has two older brothers. One was 27, one is 26. Um, they went to the to the school and they called the principal uh, because nobody, females don't get out of, of their work just like that. They have to have a permission because in that culture back then you have to have a, a chaperone. And any female cannot leave the, the work uh, or any, any, or even house or any, any official place without a, a permission from her family. They investigated with the school, the principal, told them that the the report pro proves that like when they leave they have what I mean by a report that when they leave they have to sign a document or they have a form they fill out who grabbed her at what time she left and why she said yeah she left uh, she left that day she asked us for a permission that she's going to leave with the uh, with somebody um, she gave of course a fake name uh, and she left and she was supposed to come back but she never came back is she okay and they they confirmed to her that she's okay but she's in a very bad situation and uh, they are suspecting a home attempt murder uh, 
and uh, because there is not that much information they didn't know what to do or whom to turn to after that uh, because there was no names the investigators went back to the hospital and uh, they they asked for the father phone number they called the father and they asked him how many kids he has and who is in the house living with them with any murder case or missing person case usually the first people to ask as the are the households whoever is living around that victim the father said she, that she has two older brother one at 27 one at 26 and her only they don't have any other kids and her mom the investigators now notice the red flag why the mom is not there usually when they show up in hospitals the first person who is there in the room with the victim is the mom like in freaking out breaking down worried about the, their kid but they didn't see that in this case which made them sus suspicious of something happening so they asked for the brothers first the brothers came in and the mom they called the mom and the brothers but only the brothers showed up the brothers came to the to the hospital they took them aside away from the dad away from the sister and they interrogate them the brothers were asked do you know where your sister went that day they said no do you have any problems with her they said no she's a very good girl she's amazing we all love her we are shocked that this has happened to her now the police officers they were shocked too what like um there is no sign of any anything suspicious in the matter and again they had nobody t to uh investigate with like they didn't give any sign that they have any trouble with their sister the police officer asked about the mom and they said she's at home so they told them we will keep you now for further investigation and they locked them up they sent them to the detention area against their will even when they were claiming to be innocent because they want to interrogate the mom alone without them and they don't want them to communicate with the mom they want to hear each one separate they called the mom she came to the hospital rushing she pretended to be worried about her daughter but as soon as they met her they told her we think we found out who did this to your daughter and they are locked up in the police station but we need to hear what what you say and what you think who did it she said who did you hold in the police station are you really serious you you catch the criminals and she was not surprised she was worried so she didn't give the the right uh, response which confirmed to the police officers that she knows something they told her yeah we have your kids then she broke down she said no don't don't hold them it was my fault they didn't do anything it was me it was my decision it was my idea and then they told her okay um, we are all ears we want to hear the story from the very beginning we don't want any lies so tell us the story she sat down and she said you promised to get my kids out they said we will talk about this later on so the mom started telling the story she said well I told my kids to go and uh, grab her from the school because she brought shame to the family she's 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 uh, not a good girl this is not the good daughter I raised she's gonna bring shame to the family by by what she did she was pregnant and we had to get, to wash our family shame and get rid of her before she ruined our reputation in the society and she started crying and she collapsed and the police officers were, were really shocked that the brothers did it but they didn't give any sign 
um, after that, the police officers had to separate the mom again from not meeting her kids, and they detained her in the police station. Detained her in the police station. They brought the the two the two kids, her children. I shouldn't say children. Actually, they are a grown up men. So they brought the two suspects, her brothers. Um, as you see, I'm recording this organically, translating at the moment, so forgive me for making mistakes here and there. I, I don't want to edit anything. Back to the story. They brought the two brothers. They questioned them again, and they told them, we got your mom in the police station. We know everything. You cannot lie to us anymore. We know that you did it. And so tell us this story. Both, both brothers collapsed. They freaked out, started crying. We had to do it. You know it's the family reputation. Uh, we are not bad people. We are glad that she didn't die, but we had to get rid of her. She's going to bring the shame to the family. Uh, and we did what our mom told us to do. And we hate this mom. She made us do this. Uh, and... Uh, it's not our fault, it's her fault. She told us to do that. The police officers told them, okay, tell us the full story from the very beginning. What, how, do, how did you do it and what happened? They said, well, our mom told us that our sister is pregnant because she has a big uh, belly now and, ever, and so obvious and everybody going to see it. We believed her. We had to plan for something to get rid of our sister peacefully without anybody knowing anything and she would just be missing and the problem will be solved. So we went to the to work. We told her our father wants you immediately. We need to take you home. So she went to the principal of the school, took a permission to leave with us and we told her not to give her our names. She said she's leaving for a little bit and we will come back and that's how we were able to take her out. We took her in the car. She was questioning us the whole road. What's, where are we going? What's going on? We told her you will know in a little bit. We took her far away outside the city to the desert and got her out of the car. She was screaming and crying, but we felt that we have to clear our family name and save the family reputation and get rid of her. So my brother hit her with a rod, metal rod in her head, and that's what caused the gash in her head. And I stabbed her in her stomach and the baby. So we saw because we want to kill the baby and get rid of it. When we saw her bleeding, we thought she's going to die, that she's going to die, bleed and, and die. So we left her in the desert. We didn't know she's going to survive. And then somebody, I think, found her and brought her to the hospital. And that's the story, simple. The police officer told him, your mom is here. So now we want you all to gather and we want to see and investigate the matter more and see if you both, uh, both the stories match. They brought the mom and immediately as soon as the kids saw their mom, the, the brothers saw their mom, they attacked the mom, they kicked her with their feet and were yelling and screaming at her, you're an evil mom, you told us to do this, it's your fault. We almost killed our sister. It's not our fault. The police officer then told them to stop, separated them, and put the mom in a separate cell and the brothers in another cell. The father, of course, were informed with what happened. He collapsed the poor dad. He didn't know about any of this. Nobody told him about this. They told him just the sister is missing. She left work and she never came back. It was all a plan by the mom and the bo both, both brothers. After that, the police officers went to the hospital, got the, poli the, the lab results finally, and they found out that the sister was virgin. She never been touched. She's a pure, and whatever they said is, is just a lie, because even the blood work came out negative. There is no pregnancy. However, the police officer, not the police officers, the hospital report uh, 
explained that the girl had a massive tumor in her abdominal cavity that made her look like she's a pregnant but she wasn't and back in the days they probably out of neglect she didn't have pain or there was no like a crazy symptoms besides just having a growth inside her abdominal cavity from the tumor or whatever was growing or a cyst or whatever was growing inside her belly back then that made her look like she's pregnant and the mom freaked out and thought the best way is to get rid of her daughter. After that, the police officer went and told the mom that this is not the case, your daughter is innocent, she's pure, and told the brothers the same thing. The brothers collapsed, they started crying. They said, it's our mom's fault, we shouldn't have done this. Um, and the police officers told them, we cannot do anything about this. Now there is a, a valid active case. You will be charged for attempt murder, and we, we will see you in the court. I think they spent weeks, a couple weeks in the, in the detention until the court day. The daughter, after that, got informed with everything happened. I think she was in a coma for, for a week. When she woke up, she has been informed she was questioned uh, about everything, but she was still lying. She said, no, it's strangers who stabbed me. My mom and my brothers didn't do anything. You are guys lying. She was still protecting her family, for, and nobody knows why. In the, co in the court day, she showed up. After three weeks, she was able to leave the hospital and attend the court day with her mom and with the police officers. She begged the judge and she said, no, under pressure, they must have tortured my family to tell them what happened. And my family said these horrible things under pressure. My brothers didn't stab me. My mom didn't do anything. This is all lies. For some reason, I think that's what the report says. For some reason is that the girl was lying because she still loved her family. She understand the, the social implications of what made her family do this. Uh, so she forgave them. She still loved her mom. She begged the court to let her mom go home. And as soon as she saw her mom, she was crying on her feet to forgive her for staying in the detention, in the cell. Uh, in the detention area that long and she begged the, the, the judge to let her go home because she's an older lady and uh, under pressure and the under pressure the judge let her go and asked them to pay a fee to bail her out until the case is closed the, she was that desperate to get her family out she didn't care that she, I, the, I think the police officer says, or the report in the, poli, in the police officer in the report says, she was that kind. She was that sweet of a girl. She didn't deserve all of this. Even her family asked her for forgiveness. So she dropped the case and just to keep the family reputation and the family together, I think the case got it dropped and, uh, Nothing happened to the brothers and nothing happened to the mom. So the family reputation stay intact and maintained. They just dropped the case and nothing happened to anybody. And the story ended here. Um, as you can see, uh, the report at the bottom says, families, when they hear s things about their family members or about their daughters, they should wait a little bit, investigate, question the girl, see what's going on before they commit the murder, because a lot of girls were killed by unfairly. They were killed unfairly by their family members when they were innocent. So that's it. That's the end of our story. Until I see you next time, take care. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a good night.